I'm Father Pullman. And I'm Father Schumacher. And we, we are, are The Associates. Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Associates. So, with the, your questions, we dive right in here. So, Father, what are your thoughts about people being shocked after they die because they were judged in a way they didn't think possible? This is a fun one. Um, in a certain sense, we're all going to be judged in a way that is perfectly just and perfectly merciful. And both of those things are almost beyond our ability as humans to comprehend. So, in a sense, we'll all be shocked at our judgment. Um, C.S. Lewis did say this. He, he uh, I, I think it was C.S. Lewis. I have in my head that it was C.S. Lewis. That he, 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 I don't know, maybe he was asked a question something like this, and he said, oh yes, those who are saved will be shocked that they're saved, and those who are damned will be shocked that they're damned. And actually, I think that gets to a big part of it, that the, the truly humble which is necessary for salvation, to, to rely entirely upon the mercy of God, will be amazed at the depth of God's mercy. They will be delighted and surprised by it, at how thoroughly it has justified them. Now, I don't want to say, I want to be careful, because um, those who are saved, I mean, they, trust, they do trust in the mercy of God. So in a certain sense, they won't be shocked as if there was no possible way that I could be saved, because they recognize the, the power of God. But on the contrary, those who will be condemned, um, their condemnation, it seems to me, is primarily through pride. And they would be, it's, it, it would seem perfectly reasonable that they would think, well, I can't be condemned. Um, and, and then they find themselves condemned. Anyway, I don't know. I'm not, I have not been to the judgment yet. Um, I can't, uh, can't answer this in an authoritative way. But it does seem reasonable to think that, that we will all be delighted to find ourselves among the saved if, if uh, we do find ourselves among the saved, which is a reason to keep seeking that salvation. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually uh, reminded in this regard of he was a priest who, had, um, who was technically dead for a period of time was revived. And he had a, an experience. Uh, he spoke of it actually with Mother Angelica. And uh, he said he met Christ. And he said, you did this, you did this. And he was experiencing a, uh, a certain manifestation of what we call the particular judgment at our death. And what was very sobering was at the end, uh, so he, as Christ was give, enumerating his sins, he said, I was before truth himself. And so I had no defense. And what was staggering about this was, at the end he said, your, your sentence is hell. Well, he was revived, uh, and obviously he had a profound conversion from that. Um, and so I, I, I bring that up, uh, not because we should um, be in a servile fear of God, uh, but we should take serious... I, I, uh, Father, I'd be interested in your thoughts on this, but I get the sense that some people don't think that certain sins are serious, perhaps because they don't understand how, how good God is, or that uh, a sin is, is an offense because we have a personal relationship. Uh, right. Um, I think something you said is very important here, that he was standing before truth himself. Um, we're not going to be able to lie to God or to conceal anything from him. Um, and he is the standard. So if he says it's a sin, then it's a sin. We don't get to make up which, ones are, which things are sins and which ones are not. Um, this is the, the lesson of the, the dialogue of God with Job at the end of the book of Job. And he basically says, where were you when I created the world? And his point is, I'm the one who created the whole order. I'm the standard of goodness and truth and justice. And for us humans to come, as we so often do in our pride and contempt, um, before God and say, well, I, I don't think that's a sin, um, or I don't think that's as bad a sin as you do, is unreasonable, really, in the end. Um, so perhaps to say, so if we don't want to be shocked, then we shouldn't make man the measure of all things we really should let Holy Mother Church be that measure. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so um, 
the saints will be delighted in their sentence of, of eternal salvation and beatitude. Um, and we should strive with everything we have to be among their number because our salvation is not assured. Um, for God's part, he's done the work, right? And our task is to cooperate with him. But we know our weakness and we are all very weak. Um, it's going to take a miracle of grace for us to be saved. All right. Uh, I'm going to We'll get to this next question, but I think it would be remiss not to mention uh, it's been the, the practice of Catholics for a long time to pray to St. Joseph, patron of a, ha a happy, holy death, precisely for that grace. Because if we have a happy, holy death, then all of the sins that came before will, won't even matter in the absolute sense of making it to, to heaven. So our next question, what qualifications and requirements must there be to become a priest or religious? This is a fun one. Um, in a certain sense, um, so the, these are actually two different questions, right? Um, the discernment of the religious life and the discernment of the priesthood are distinct, even for one who goes on to become a religious priest, like a Jesuit or a Franciscan. Um, the religious life and the priesthood are both calls from God. No one takes them upon himself. So if God is calling one particular soul to the religious life, um, the qualifications are really, is the man or woman responding to that call? Um, so, okay, so then you go find out. You go hang out at a novitiate, and you uh, ask the, the, the house, you, ha you ask the community, do you think that I'm called into to become a member of your community? I think that I might be. Um, but the community actually gets a, gets a say in this, which is kind of neat, because they're accepting you into their family. Um, okay, so that means, um, do you, do you, first of all, they have to help you discern whether this really is from God. Um, and are you really capable and, it, and have the real intention of pursuing this, right? And that's the whole point of a religious novitiate and uh, initiation into the religious life. So funny story here. Uh, there was a lady who was so afraid she was called to religious life, and I was pretty convinced that uh, she didn't have one. So I made her go to, to see, and I sent her to a religious community, and it was apparent within a few days the sisters told her, you don't have a vocation. And she found two things. One, she didn't have that vocation that she was petrified that she, had, she did have. And two, she found out her heart was filled with joy because she had the openness to actually look into it. Right, right. So the priesthood is a little bit different. Um, the priesthood is a little different because the, the role of a priest is a little different. Um, one way to characterize it is that the, a religious vocation is for the sanctification of that person. And the sanctification of an individual person overflows into the sanctification of the church, but kind of accidentally, as it were. That's not the point of the religious life. The priesthood, on the other hand, the purpose of the priesthood is for the sanctification of the church. And then, if a priest lives that vocation well, it also overflows into sanctification for himself. But this is why we say that the sacraments are effective, even if the priest is a bad man. Thanks be to God that that's true, because yes. we don't need to worry about whether this particular priest is, is a good man when he hears my confession. If he says the words of absolution, then I'm absolved. If he says the words of the Mass, then I receive Holy Communion. And it doesn't really matter whether he's a good man or a bad man. It does matter whether he's a good man or a bad man, but not for the efficacy of the sacraments. Because it is Christ himself that does it through the priest. Right. So the priest sanctifies the church because it's Christ acting through that instrumental means of him as an instrument upon this earth. And as I say, if he lives that well, it also makes him a holy man. Um, so that means the requirements for priesthood are a little different because in order to be an apt instrument for Christ, typically you need things... Um, an aptitude for study, for example. A priest needs to be good at moral theology and dogmatic theology. And that requires a certain level of intelligence and an aptitude for study that not everyone has. Um, now, that doesn't mean that someone who isn't apt for study cannot become a priest. But, and there are examples of that in history, of very good priests who were apparently not very good students. Um, but those are the exceptions to the rule. What other kinds of qualifications might there be for priesthood? Uh, one of the things that uh, we, we may forget uh, if, if we look around our, our modern world uh, is eminent virtue. Uh, you know, uh, 
Uh, there's the saying, and I, I believe it, and maybe it was uh, Pope Pius X, um, Saint, Saint Pius X, but he said that if a priest was holy, his people would be good. If a priest was good, uh, his people would be um, okay, basically. But uh, if, the, if the priest uh, is merely lukewarm, is merely lukewarm, uh, his his people will will basically uh, have uh, a life of sin. Uh, and so, God God desires to give us grace and goodness uh, and holiness uh, in a hierarchical fashion that that we see. Well, we don't see, but we know from even the hierarchy of the angels, where they're in communion with each other precisely because certain higher angels uh, give lights and graces to the, the angels of the lower choirs. Right. So a priest exercises the function of Christ the head in the church, and that means that he has to be apt also for fulfilling that function. Um, so a certain, uh, the qualities of headship, um, of ability to administer and to direct the activities of the body would be would be necessary for a priest. Click the logo right there to subscribe. Thanks for watching. New episodes come out every Wednesday.